What's up guys, Yuri here. 30 second hip fix. That's what we're talking about here. I've got two exercises, two stretches that I do every single morning. I'm in the living room, so I'm gonna invite you in and I'm gonna show you what I do every day, not just in the morning, but pretty much at any point of the day. So what you're gonna need is a nice heavy duty rubber band like this. You can get these on Amazon or most, I was gonna say health food stores, most fitness stores will have them. Here's what you're gonna do. We're gonna open up the left hip flexor, okay? And the hip flexors get really tight when we're sitting a lot. Okay, we're in this kind of flex position. So here's what we're gonna do. Instead of taking a basic hip flexor lunge and stretch like this, we're gonna do a little bit of a nerve or hip flexor floss using the band. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna wrap the bands around the top of your femur, okay? You're gonna come right back into a nice extended position and you're just gonna sit back nice and easy and then just allow it to come forward. Now as you're doing this, Okay, it's just, no, no, right now I'm kind of sliding forward on the, on the floor, but if you've got a good stable floor, that'll help. Otherwise, you can just kind of support yourself, making sure your back is flat. So the key thing here is to focus on making sure, I'll just turn around a little bit here. It's not a good angle with the band, but you want to make sure you're squeezing this glute, okay? Because when you squeeze the glute, it's going to relax that hip flexor. So we're going to bring it back. And we're gonna squeeze that glute, just allow ourselves to sink into this, and you can just push yourself back and back in. Okay, so that's the basic version. A little bit more advanced in terms of the hip flexor flossing here is going to an actual lunge, drop down and up, down and up, okay? So that's the first thing you wanna do, and you can do about 10 reps of the floss on either side. Immediately you'll feel, you'll just feel this stuff open up, it's amazing. Second thing you want to do is, again, this is so important when we're sitting so often, is, again, this stuff I've uh, mostly learned from my buddy Kelly Starrett, who's like the man when it comes to mobility. So here we're going to take a couch. Okay, I'm going to show you a couple options here. First one is you're going to literally plant your, your knee right on the floor. You're going to get that back foot right up against the couch. And you want to get that knee as close to the base of the couch as you possibly can. So based on your flexibility, you're working right in here, working right through the quad. Torso's tall, core's engaged, squeeze that glute. Now, if you want to take things a little bit further, you can do a little PNF, which is proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation, a fancy word for saying contract, relax. So here I can push this leg or this foot into the couch Contracting my quad, you're gonna feel that. Relax, sit it back a little bit more. Contract, relax, sit it back a little bit more. As you get more and more flexible, the gap here, the angle, is gonna shorten. So it'll be right up heel to bum. Ideal, okay? Hold this for as long as you can. Two minutes, four minutes, the more the better, okay? So that's one way you can do it. The other way you can do it is if you don't feel comfortable on the ground, is put a pillow underneath, underneath your knee or you can use the crease of your couch. So same stretch, similar stretch. I'm gonna go right into the crease of my couch with my knee. And here, I'm just gonna sit right back, nice and tall at the torso, core is engaged. Squeeze that glute, okay? Because again, we're stretching this out. We wanna activate the opposing muscle group. <sighs> Beautiful, okay? So it shouldn't be painful. You should feel the stretch, but you shouldn't be, like, you shouldn't have tears coming out of your eyes. So there you go. Minimum 30 seconds on each side. Do that in the morning. Do it throughout the day. Already I can feel this whole side opened up. And that's the key to preventing a lot of these issues that we get so often when we're sitting down all day in this flex position. We want to open this up. All right, guys. So there you go. 30 second hip flexor fix. Give it a shot. Let me know how it goes. Join me over at the blog. The link for that is below. And if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Share it with somebody who you think needs to open up their hips. And I'll see you in the next video. So with this test, it's a, little, it's a little bit more advanced, but it really helps you target to see if you end up having tight 
uh, hip flexors, uh, and a couple other things. And I'll get Donnelly to demonstrate it. And what this test is specifically called is the Thomas test. So I'm looking at going uh, on the edge of a table. So I'm sitting on the edge of the table, preferably like where my sit bones are, ischial tuberosities. So I'm sitting there. And then I'm going to take one of the knees and pull it up towards me. So now what I've done is I've kind of locked up that pelvis. You can see Donnelly's got great posture, upright posture, and now she's going to rock back and she's going to let that other leg hang there. And I'm looking at three different things. I'm looking for three things that could be happening. I want to see, I want to see if the, the hamstring or the back of the thigh, if it's off of the, um, if it's kind of off of the mat or the plinth here. And what that'll end up showing me is hip flexor tightness. So with Donna Lee, she's fine. Her, her, the back of her hamstring is like below the plinth area. So she's fine when it comes to uh, hip flexor tightness or iliopsoas tightness. The second thing I'm looking at is I want to take a look at uh, this knee, this knee here. Now, if the bend in the knee ends up being um, you know, greater than, you know, 70 degrees, then what that ends up showing me, ends up, it ends up showing me that she ends up being tight in that rectus femoris. Um, so, so what I'm looking at is, you know, you know, this ends up being 90. If it ends up being less than 70, so from here to straight, it ends up showing me that she ends up being tight in that rectus femoris muscle. So, you know, bent to here is 90, and if she's here or more, that ends up showing me that she ends up being tight in that rectus femoris that I end up needed targeting. Now, the third, so with her, I, I, she ends up being, it looks like that she's tight in that rectus femoris, and it's something that I need to work on. Then the third thing that it ends up showing me is I'm looking at her knee and seeing how it is in line with her hip. If the knee is out to the side, that ends up showing me that she ends up having IT band tightness. So out to the side here, if there ends up being tightness in the IT band. And if I see that leg out to the side, then that ends up showing me that it's something that I need to work on uh, with her, uh, loosening up that IT band. Perfect. And now, Donnelly, I'll get you to switch over and go to the other side. So we looked at that right leg. Now we'll try the other side. Good, pulling it close, great, rocking back. And then I'm going to work a little quicker with this one. So I'm looking here, she's fine with a, with a hip flexor tightness or iliopsoas. If I'm looking here, is it looking at this being 90, is she, you know, less than 70? So I would say yes. You know, if, and if I kind of test, uh, I can see that she's tight through there. It's something that I need to work on with her. If I look at that knee in line with the hip, it's fine that it's not popped out to the side, but if it was popped out to the side like this, the knee outside of that hip, that would show me that she has IT band tightness, so she doesn't. Perfect, Donnelly. So, that, so looking at all that, it shows me that with Donnelly, I need to work on her rectus femoris or like her, her quad tightness, and she's fine when it comes to hip flexor uh, tightness, and she's fine with IT band tightness. And if you saw some of the other videos that I have done uh, with Donnelly, you could see that she ends up being good when it comes to her hip flexor um, flexibility. So there you go. Give that test a go. Um, you know, what ends up working well is if you use like your iPhone and you go through the movement and someone kind of films you go through, through the movement from the side and from the front, you can end up taking a look at it. And, or you can just have someone end up uh, quickly testing you, looking for those three different things. So you can end up using a plinth like this. If you're in a gym setting, you can end up using like a, a bench uh, to go through the test. If you're at home, you can use your table, but kind of be cautious when it comes to the table and don't go too, too crazy or it'll flip over. Um, and that's, come, that's from experience. Uh, testing things out at, at home on the kitchen table. So make sure that you end up uh, are in a good stable table um, when you're going through this exercise. So this is Rick Cassells from exercisesforinjuries.com. Give that advanced test, that advanced hip flexor test a go and let me know how, how 
you know, what the results are for you. So this is Rick Casales from exercisesforinjuries.com. Make sure to swing by exercisesforinjuries.com. Enter in your injury or pain. There's a good chance of an article, video, or an interview that'll help you with your injury or pain. So this is Rick Casales from exercisesforinjuries.com saying take care and bye-bye.